Γεια σα! Καλώ σα μου! Είμαστε και πάλι στο πρωτοφρονείο και εγώ είμαι η Φιλενά σου, είμαι λυπομένη και φέρνω σήμερα ένα μάθημα λεξιλογικό για λέξει τι οποίε μπορεί εύκολα να μπερδέψει εάν δεν τι προσέξει. Right, ok, good. Έχω τι καρτούλε μου εδώ, με αυτέ θα ασχοληθούμε σήμερα. Θα σα δείξω λεξιλόγιο το οποίο ακούγεται ηχητικά παρόμοιο ή μοιάζει στην ορθογραφία ή δεν έχει καμία σχέση μεταξύ του, αλλά παρά τα αυτά το μπερδεύει. Θα τα εξηγήσω όλα αυτά. Στα αγγλικά θα γίνει το μαθηματάκι μα σήμερα γιατί είπαμε είναι λιγάκι πιο, έτσι, για πιο προχωρημένο. Ένα επίπεδα, εάν δεν ε, το καταλαβαίνει, εάν δεν αισθάνεσαι καλά την ώρα που το βλέπει, τότε μπορεί να ξεκινήσει με λίγο πιο ε, αρχάρια βίντεο. Τα περισσότερα λένε και στον τίτλο για αρχάριου. Επομένω, μπορεί να δοκιμάσει εκεί ή κάποιο άλλο θέμα από το κανάλι μα το οποίο σε ενδιαφέρει. Good. Ok, let's move on. Now, my first couple of easily confused words is this card over here. So, this word is allowed, right? And I've got another one. Which is allowed, right? So the pronunciation is relatively easy, relatively same, right? That's allowed and allowed. Ow, ow, ow! It's a bit more with your open, <laughs> with your open mouth. Let's say to say allowed, but actually the pronunciation is pretty same, right? So in this card over here, this side of the card, um, we would say I'm allowed to go out. I'm allowed to do that. I'm not allowed to do that. If you are allowed to do something, that means that you are legally, or from your parents, or from your boss, maybe, you have the permission to do it, right? Somebody lets you do it. So you are allowed, right? But this one over here has nothing to do with permissions or with somebody letting you do things, right? This one over here is when you say, can you read it aloud for me? Aloud, like with a loud voice, right? So that other people can hear you too. So if you read a text aloud, that means you read so that others can listen to what you say and hear you, right? And you all read together. So that was my first one. As you see, that was an easy one. It's not so advanced anyway, right? But I'm moving on and they're going to get a little bit more difficult. Now, my next one is this one here. Let's check it out. It's loose, right? That's a loo over there. Loose. Right, and oops, that one's loose, right? So in this case over here, loose mean you lost something. You do not have it anymore, right? For example, um, you had the man of your heart or the love of your life and you lost them. That means they went away, right? So if you lose something, that means you had something in your possession or you had it around you, but it's not here anymore. So you lost it. Right, and loose, that's another word. You would read it with an S here, kind of, right? So it's loose, and loose means not fastened or not tight. Like if you are on a plane and you fasten your seatbelt, if you don't fasten it, it's loose, right? <laughs> it's loose, so, or your clothes, if they are tight, they are tight, right? They touch your body, they are tight, but they may be loose. Right? Not directly onto your body. Right. So that was another easy one. You can play it along. Next card is this one. Oh, I like that one. That one is weather. As we say, the weather is nice today, right? You describe the climate and the conditions of each day or each time, each part of the day, maybe, right? So if the weather is good, that means Generally, that means it's sunny and you have a mild temperature, not too extreme, right? Not cold, but not hot either. So that's good weather or mild weather. But if there's bad weather, then there's at least rain or maybe hail or maybe snow, things like that. Too windy stuff. Yeah, that's the weather. We talk about the weather. Like, what's the weather like where you are at? I would like to know that. Leave a comment if you want to tell me what's the weather like at the place where you're at. So, my next one is on the other side though, that's weather. So, tell me whether you like it or not. Sorry, whether you like it or not, whether it's good or not. I would like to know whether this lesson is helpful to you, right? This is the word weather. It replaces if in cases we want to actually use the word if 
right, to make a hypothesis, but it's not one of those hypotheses where you have um, the beginning saying if this happens and then an end to it, right, saying what would happen in this case. So listen to this, I want to know whether you like the lesson, whether the lesson is helpful to you, but if you like the lesson, please like me with a big thumbs up and maybe subscribe to the channel. You see, that was if you like the lesson, right? Because I have two parts of the sentence. If you like it, I make the hypothesis and then the hypothetical outcome of what would happen if, right? But this one is whether, I don't know whether you like it. So that indicates whether mm, or not. <laughs> whether this or that, right? It gives you a two choice kind of kind of options, like two options, yeah. Right, talked enough about that one. <laughs> Let's move on. I hope you enjoyed the lesson so far. I've got a lot more cards to go. This one's one of my favorites. Everybody tends to, you know, confuse those two until one day you just know it. You just know what it is and what it means. That one's affect, there you go. Affect, and it's a verb, affect, if something affects you, that means something happened or somebody told you something, let's say, and uh, you took it to heart or um, it took a toll on you, right? It affected you. For example, we would say um, writing or post posting mean comments about me on YouTube affects me. That really makes me sad, right? It affects me. But also in a non-personal context, we would say, um, Mm, throwing your litter everywhere, right, affects the climate, right, affects um, the earth, right, so that's a verb over here, and affect, this is now, this describes the outcome, what happens if you affect me negatively, what is the effect, what's the outcome, what happens if you post bad comments about me on YouTube, that affects me, right, and the effect of it is that I just slay and I keep on doing what I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? So that's the effect. Yes, it's the effect. It's what comes out of a situation, whether good or bad, right? If you cause an action, right? The reaction of it is the effect, right? Yes, that's basics. Everybody should know that because if you take tests and exams and so on, it always comes up this way or another. You're gonna need it. Now, this one. I like that one because most people do not know this word over here. There you go. Those are two different ones actually. They belong together so I didn't know what to do and I just wrote them, you know, side by side. Let me um, side by side, right? Because that's side by side, right? So first off, first off is here, right, side. You cite somebody if you, let's say, write an essay or a thesis for your master's studies or you write an article somewhere and if you cite somebody, that means you literally tr transfer the words. They have said something and you cite them. You use what they said, right? exactly the way they said it or they wrote it, like another author, another scientist, maybe um, maybe a rock star or somebody. People cite people everywhere. You know all of these quotes or many of those quotes that you can find circulating the internet, those are just cites, right? They cite other people, right? Yeah, this is the cite. It's a verb, as I said, and it describes all of that. And um, just be careful, citing, you cite somebody, that means that you literally use the word the way they said or wrote them, and then you've got their name on them, right, or on it. I mean, you've got their name on your writing, or you've got a bibliography in the end, and you give the actual source, right, the source of information and the name of the person you cited. If you don't do that, we would call it plagiarism, for example, but that's another type of thing. So citing is you transfer their words and you actually say that this person said this. Right, and that one's a little more easy, a little easier, I should should have said, right? A little easier. It's site, like you would say, a, a website, right? So that one's, um, let's say, a place, right? Whether it's a web place or it's a real place, you would say, uh, there, are, there are restaurants on site. If you go someplace, let's, let's take, for instance, you go 
um, to a concert and you've booked your tickets and then you want to ask if there's something to eat over there. So you would say, um, are there restaurants on site? Right, describing the actual place, not only a website. Right, and this one's left on this card over here, site is um, like when you go sightseeing, for example, right? Sight is anything you can see, anything which is visible to you. So it's a sight, maybe a landmark of a, of a town, right? Or a land or country. Um, those are also sights, like when you go web, um, when you go sightseeing. And um, yeah, that's the word sight. It is related to the ability of your eye to see things, to perceive this, right, sense and um, and help you see. And you could also use it for landmarks and real sites like um, the Parthenon or the Eiffel Tower or the Big Ben. Right, thank you, little card. Moving on, now it's getting real. All right, I've got those those over here for proficiency lovers for people who really compete and, and are taking tests and so on so this one is compose and you oftentimes get it together with the word comprise it comes up in the test together with those two words oftentimes right come up together that's what i'm saying and um we tend to confuse them or we cannot tell them apart so easily. So let me talk about that one first. Comprise means um, to consist, right? So you would say you would say this lesson, right? The lesson that we are having right now comprises of, right? Or is comprised of um, cards and words and me speaking and all of that. So comprise mean to have more parts and they make a whole, they make a unit, so to say, right? That is the word comprise. Take a look at it in the dictionary or in your online dictionary. You really have to look this one up. It is tricky. Um, the syntax is tricky and you should take a look at that definitely. This one's easier though. Compose. Compose mean you actively make a unit, you actively create a unit out of many different things or parts. You compose something. It means you put things together to make a composition, right? So composition for students will be what you write at school, right? Or what you write in an exam, that's a composition because you um, take different words, let's say in different sentences and you compose them, you put them together in a way, right? You compose them in a way that makes it easy to read and wonderful and you get your message across, right? A composition could be other, other things as well, like um, a music composition, right? Yes, the gathering of notes and keys and so on, right? To make a melody, that's a music composition. Or um, what else could be compose a composition? Well, I don't know of any more examples right now. Nothing really pops up in my head. But anyway, I think you've got the idea. Compose. And be careful with comprise. Take a look at that one in the dictionary, right? I highly advise. All right, I got a worst one. So this one's pretty easy for us Greeks because we um, use it in our everyday speaking, right? In a, in a mother tongue as well. So compliment, if you make a compliment, is um, when you say something beautiful or nice, right? Something courteous about a person or about a situation, you make a compliment, right? Pay attention, we combine it with the word make. We make a compliment, right? You could post any compliment that would be <laughs> very pleasing to me, right? So that's a compliment. Or you could use it as a verb and say, I would like to compliment you on your work, right? You could use it as a verb, so, right? So to say, instead of saying, I want to make a compliment, I would like to compliment you. And the preposition you use to follow that is on. I want to compliment you on your work, right? On your studies, on your success, and so on. But that one is compliment. You compliment. So this one's pretty similar to the other words I used to, um, I just described those ones here. Compliment means to make full, right? So if you have, let's say, a puzzle, and maybe that's a good example, yeah. If you've got a puzzle, and you try to make the puzzle, if one piece is missing, 
you cannot complement it. You need, let's say, 10,000 pieces to complement the puzzle, which means to kind of add them together to make a whole, right? That one might be tricky because the explanation in, in English may be a little too weird. I would um, accept that if you'd say that. So maybe just take a look at that one online or in your dictionary. Right, okay. I love this one. My students always make this mistake, to be honest, but we talk about it and then it's good. It's uninterested and I'm disinterested. Okay, so starting off with the easy part, uninterested, I'm sorry for the D here. Well, you know what happened. I guess you understand what happened. So if you are uninterested, that means you don't care. You're indifferent. Well, people talk to you about human rights and you go like, who cares? I'm fine, <laughs> you know? That's when you are uninterested. You are indifferent, right? No interest whatsoever. You do not care, right? It's something that does not affect you and you do not care. You are uninterested. You do not show your interest this way or another. But if you are disinterested, right, that's a dis, it's another uh, morphine which is used in the front of a word to make the negative out of it or to kind of connote a negative type of meaning, just as un is here, right? Those are different, but I'm not going to get into it right now. But what I want to say is if you're disinterested, that means you do not, um, how, should I, how should I explain that? You are disinterested means you are impartial. You do not care either way, right? So in a discussion or a debate, let's say. Well, let's take a debate. It's a debate between uh, two political parties, parties, um, <laughs> two political parties, um, due to the election, let's say, right? There's an upcoming election and there's a debate. So if you are disinterested, that means you are not in favour of either one of the parties, neither one of the parties, right? You do not care. It is not in your best interest. You are not interested in it. It doesn't matter to you whether this happens or the other, right? In both cases, you are not interested. It, is not, it doesn't serve your interest. Right? So, off we go. Next one. This one also comes up in examinations, especially, let's take um, the Michigan ECP. You see those two words all the time. And in most cases, they are used in your reading section, where you have those reading comprehension tests to complete, and you circle A, B, C, D, and so on. Also in the Cambridge examination, but now as, you know, as an example, I think Michigan is one of the examinations that we um, mostly have where those two words are mostly um, used and also and also confused. So infer means to make a meaning out of what you have read or out of what a person has said. Right? That is what you infer, what you make out of it. Right? If you hear me talking and we go through the lesson and we go through the cards and you play the game again and you see if you know them or not, if you can recall them or retain them or not, right? then you infer that we both did a great job, for example. Or you infer that it's right or wrong, that's stupid or nice. Right? This is an inference. This is what you infer out of what you heard, what you read, what you saw, what you saw, sorry and imply, and that's not all the other thing practically, they are just used as synonyms sometimes, or we students of English think they are used as synonyms, right? If you imply something, that means you do not say it directly and straight to my face, for example, but there's a subtle meaning, there's a subtle message, right? Yeah, yeah, not, not obvious, not direct, but you subtly imply it. Right? You say something, but you don't really say it straightforward. You know what I'm saying? So if you tell me, um, for example, for example, if you tell me, um, if you look at me right now, what I'm wearing, because I'm wearing a t-shirt, right? And if you look at me and you say, oh, it must have been very warm in your area. I would say, oh, what are you implying? This is something you implied, right? You imply that it's so warm I had to take my jacket off. Or in worst cases, even worse, or a better example would be if you tell me, um, oh, that was a little um, too much makeup. 
that's an implication. You don't say it directly to me, but if you go like, you could say it directly to me, to my face. But if you go like, um, oh, that looks like a very strong blush you have on, that means you probably want to say, my makeup is dreadful, but you're not saying it. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, a, <laughs> that's an implication. It's something you want to just, you know, subtly squeeze in. It's a message you don't want to tell straightforward, straight to my face, you imply it. That's an implication, you imply it. Yeah, all right, that happens quite a lot. Good, and I've got two cards left. Let's go ahead with proceed, that's proceed, and that one's over here is proceed, right? Pro, sorry, proceed and proceed, right? Okay, so proceed means not to follow. You do not follow, but you were first. Right? If something precedes another action, that means it happens earlier. Right? It happens earlier than the next action you are des describing. Right? So that's when you proceed. Um, for example, I like this, this phrase, it's kind of catchy, and I've been using it a lot lately. It's, um, reputation precedes me. I don't use it for myself, no. But I've heard it in a song and I kind of like it. It says reputation, it's like your fame, what people say about you, right? Your reputation precedes you. That means your reputation comes first and then you follow. I've heard it in a silly song, but it's a nice expression. I find it kind of catchy. Okay, and proceed. Proceed is to go on, to move forward, right? So if you, if I stop talking now because you want to ask me a question, if you could, I would, you, you then you would say, please proceed. It's like saying, please go ahead, go on, proceed, right? So proceed could be like really going further, right? Walking along or walking away, right? Proceeding or coming closer, proceed, come on, go ahead. Or when we speak, um, we proceed with our job, with our work, with the tasks we have to accomplish, right? We proceed, we go up, we go farther, we do more. That is when we proceed. Take um, a minute to pay attention to that one because if you use an S right here, proceeds, right? Proceeds, it could be another word, it's all the other word, and a noun meaning income, meaning revenue we had. Uh, because we organized an event or a party or a lesson or whatever, right? So those are the proceeds. There's a nest to it and it can be used as a noun. It is another word. It's another noun, right? It's not he proceeds necessarily. That's what I'm saying, right? It's not only he, she, it proceeds, but it can also be another word meaning revenue. You uh, kind of gain, you make out of an event or something that you organize. For example, if you take part in um, in a fundraising event of any sort, uh, at Christmas, let's say, at Christmas, right? So you take a part in a fundraising event at Christmas and the proceeds, the proceeds with an S, are donated to this charity, right? That means the money they make out of the event will be given, will be donated, right? To a charity. All right. And last but not least, I've got three words on that as well. I've got my first one is assert. I genuinely love it. Love this word. It's very useful for you. It's useful to you for an essay, for example. Or it's I, I believe it's useful to, to us for our life as well. But anyway, assert. And then I've got two relevant words, ensure and assure. Ensure and assure, right? So first off, assert means to speak up your mind and to give your opinion boldly, let's say, right, boldly. So you really believe in it and you maintain it, right? You assert. So I assert this and that. That means it is my opinion and I can make sure that you understand what I'm saying. So in this case, I am assertive. Assertive mean, me, means being confident in myself and confident in what I'm doing or saying. And in this case, I assert it, right? I assert it, means I, I, I affirm it. It's an affirmation, right? Look at, look at those words, if they are all unknown to you and if I'm just speak Greek to you. If I speak Greek to you, then look them up. It's um, a great deal of work and it's a good, 
piece of vocabulary that you should learn how to use, use uh, your lexicon or your dictionary alongside this video. It's going to be very helpful if you find it difficult to get me. And those two now, ensure and assure. Um, if you want to ensure something, that means you want to make sure, you actively want to make sure that this never happens or that you take all the precautions, all the relevant precautions about something like what could be, hang on. Um, for example, I want to ensure the safety of my children, if I had any. And um, for example, all countries or governments, let's take it, <laughs> wanted to ensure that we all stay safe during the pandemic. They wanted to ensure it. That, mean, that means they, um, they acted upon it and they wanted to take measures and all of the precautions to ensure it, to make sure that this is going to happen or not going to happen. This is when you actively ensure. And my last one is assure. I assure you I had a great time in this video. I assure you is, is when you want to use it to say, I want to make you feel sure, be sure about this thing. Right? So I assure you, I'm going to make another advanced vocabulary video as soon as I get to it. And it's going to be with all my love for all of you guys. I hope you really enjoyed it. Please, big thumbs up for me for the effort that I made today. Maybe you can share the video with your friends or subscribe to my channel. And stay tuned, Nika. Digo για το κλείσιμο, ok? Thank you very much που ήσασταν εδώ. Πολλά φιλιά, σας αγαπώ πολύ όλους, θα κάνω ένα βιντεάκι ακόμα και όσοι ενδιαφέρεστε για πραγματικά μαθήματα εξ αποστάσεως με τη μελπομένη σου και την παρέα της μπορείς να μπει στο www.stoprotothranio.com και να συναντηθούμε, να μιλήσουμε στο τηλέφωνο και να κάνουμε τα μαθήματά μας με 7 ευρώ την ώρα. Yes, that's great. Love you guys, see you around. Bye bye.